Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. I've been away on vacation, but I'm back now and we have a whole bunch of things to show you, including the brand new Makibes G07 GPS tracker with an always on, always lit screen. Look at that thing. Now, you remember recently, we did a review of the Makibes uh, G05, which was this one. Just to remind you what it looked like, how it worked. When you turn it on, you have a regular lit up screen, right? And you have all sorts of different things that you can do with it. Uh, different sports, all sorts of different tracking activity, and it's got built-in GPS. Well, this is a similar type of watch. However, it's got the transflective type of a screen. It's a lot like your old digital watch, if you remember that. This screen is always on, and when you reflect it in the sunlight, you get a brighter screen. So, let's take the little cover off. Whoa, that's on there. Good. All right. Uh, this one has a backlight. You press on the side, and it's actually turned on a light. Now, at night, you see a lot more contrast than you're seeing here. There's off. There's on, but it's a really good backlight so you can get good readings indoors, but outdoors it really shines. This one's the opposite. Outdoors it's going to be a bit dimmer, but indoors it's really bright. So in a sense, it's kind of your choice because both of these do some incredible stuff. What do they do? Well, let's talk about it. What do we have? The G07 from Makibas, directly from their AliExpress store. Check the show notes for a discount coupon on this one. Here's what it looks like, and I purposely brought up that particular screen so you can see you can actually read pushed messages from your phone. Pretty nice, huh? That'll happen directly on the G07. In terms of specs for this watch, they call it professional waterproof. All right, we'll talk about that. All these languages are supported. It's got a silica gel uh, type of a band to it, running Bluetooth 4.0. The battery, 300 to 450. That's a big range, so I don't know really what it's got. However, it does have detachable bands, but not at a removable battery. All of these functions are supported. No multiple dials, just the one that you see. Small amount of memory, no camera. 160 by 160, basically black and white resolution screen, and built-in GPS, yeah, with a 1.32 inch size screen. So let's look at it. When we take it out, we get inside the box, you'll see you have a uh, charging connector, which is non-standard, mind you. It's got a funky little connection that looks like this so don't lose it don't break it you're going to need it to slap it in to charge now it's got a good solid connection how many times can we hold the watch by the uh the charging band huh pretty good um gps is up here here's the band this one's in bright red it's really a nice smooth material notched so that when you put it in it's going to lock really well into um into the buckle okay on the back the charging ports the diode and reader for your heart rate and on the front a bezel that doesn't turn but it has writing that says okay stop light and back lap over here up and down now two buttons three buttons and a lot of stuff we can do with this the bands are definitely removable, easily just pull them and take them off. And I guess you could switch to any kind of a band that you'd like, as long as it fits. And we'll measure that. So, here's the opening screen, and there's several other screens. We're going to look at them, but the easiest way to look at them is actually to look at them in the manual. So I'm going to pull out the Chinese version of the manual, and then the English manual that says what the uh, actual buttons do, where the different things are on the back, 
and QR codes for you to scan for the app, the tethering app. It talks about a version A and a version B. And here's uh, the icons that you'll see on the screen. You can scan the QR code directly from uh, your YouTube with your, um, your phone. And when you do, you'll find that this top one is called the H Plus Watch. That's the app right there. When you launch it, you're going to get into it. It's going to look like this. We'll run through that in a minute, too. The other one brings up something different, and I couldn't find that it's as good as the H Plus. So I would go with the, uh, the, the app that you scan is version A. But try them both. And if you're on iOS, you can use these. You can scan, scan and download the apps right now and start to become familiar with them, especially if you look at it together with what we're going to do in the video here. Bluetooth connection shows you how to set the whole thing up. Common problems you run into with it. And it syncs pretty easy from what I've had. Some more text talking about all of that. What to do with short battery endurance or wrong heart rate value. Uh, they've taken some time to go through a good Q&A in this manual. Here's some configuration parameters. And then there's a warranty card. This is what they call the home page. And this is what it opens up with. And this is what everything means. From the home page, you've got the date and time and battery. Then the center row is like your environmental stuff, temperature, pressure, and supposedly your height in meters. You've got your steps, and then this circle shows you what percent of the target completion that you've set, that you've completed so far today. Then when you press the OK key, you get into this wheel, and when you press the return key, you can get into this wheel or this uh, linear menu uh, that you can scroll through. We're going to do that directly on the device itself. Here's what you get when you're looking at your daily steps screen. And you can slide to the side and get this screen. Now you get into the charts. Here's a cumulative heart rate over the last 16 hours. Here's your environmental temperature chart over the last 24 hours and your air pressure uh, in the last 24 hours. Let's look at that stuff first. From here, right, if we press this button, we get here, that's that wheel, we can go around and look at all the sports that you can go into, including snorkeling, some interesting stuff in the data for snorkeling. Ball, and then there's a stopwatch built into it before you come back around again. Up and down, and select or go back. So when you go back and you press and hold the bottom button, uh oh, ah, gotta let go. You get that menu that they were talking about right there, and this lets you go through a bunch of stuff, which we'll do when we get to that menu part. Pressing it takes you back. That's from the home screen. Now, if we go down from here, we get into daily steps. Remember that one? That's here. Distance, steps, and calories. And how do we get over to the right? Press the OK key. Which one was the OK key? This upper right one. I press that, and there's the steps per day, days of the week. I've only had it on yesterday and today. This brings us back. Go down to the next level, and now we're getting the charts. The first chart, if you recall, is for heart rate over the last 16 hours. I've had it on and off and back on. Oh, it says 24 hours here. All right. Had it on again this morning. That was last night. I didn't wear it. Mrs. Dix wasn't really too happy with that, so I left it on the nightstand. Um, this was in the evening when I was out with friends and didn't wear it. Anyway, there's the heart rate, and when you're not wearing it, it drops to zero, which is good. It's not giving you uh, readings of air or something. Then you hit it again, and we're getting the 24-hour temperature in centigrade now, it's interesting because you see it's way up here, and then it kind of falls off. Then I put it on again, it went up and, and went down. So I'm thinking it might actually be wearing, you know, measuring my body temperature when I'm wearing it. 
Otherwise, if it's ambient outdoor temperature, it should have been pretty much consistent. Not a huge change like that. You like the roosters? <laughs> I love this environment. You guys got to just put up with me. I got all sorts of noises going on and so many watches to review that I can't schedule it other than right now. So we're just going to plow through. Temperature, rooster, and barometric pressure. Again, interesting changes in barometric pressure there. And then the last one is our altitude. And uh, it's showing changes in altitude. Unfortunately, there's no numbers against the scale, so it's more or less a relative kind of a, a measurement as, as opposed to an absolute. Now, we didn't show the uh, altitude on here because that was after air pressure when you go to the next page. And there you go. That's the height over 24-hour period. If you press OK, you can see what they call a height calculation. These other ones didn't have any pressing OK, so let's press OK. There. Now it's zero, so I'm guessing it's set as this is default. And now from this point, I could go up or down, and it should give me a height difference from that neutral position. But that's what you get from here. And the last page before we go all the way around is notices. If you don't have any, you get this little circle. If you do have any, they show up here. And I do have some, so I won't be showing you that part. But I will return to the original screen and we'll move into the exercise mode. Now, pressing this top button, the OK button, takes us into this big wheel. And we can go back and forth with these buttons here to select which one we want. Too bad we can't turn the dial. That would be nice. We're going to start in running because running is what's covered first in the manual. When I press the top button again, I get to this page where it says go and a flashing GPS. I'll tell you about that in a second and uh, some other data. Now when I press it a second time and it actually starts. You'll see it's starting to do its thing here, getting my heart rate there. No steps because I'm not walking, no GPS to calculate any distance, and these bars are all empty. But what do they all mean? Well, that you can get from the manual. In the exercise mode, when we select running, the running looks like this, and what it's doing in these bars is showing you where you are in terms of these percentages for your heart rate. So if you want to be in a fat-burning zone, you want the first two to be let. If you're really messing with the aerobic exercise, you want to power out at 100%, you go there. And that's a reflection of your heart rate shown in a bar, which is kind of cool. You have another screen you can just have the time and the stopwatch on without any of the data. And then across the bottom, you can actually change what these bottom things uh, look like. Here's the symbols that apply to them. And here's what you get on each of the different screens. All right? And that's related to running. So to show you that, here I am in this basic one. It's getting 116 beats off of the floor. That was interesting. I'm worried a little bit about that. Um, I press the bottom button, and it switches to that screen. Sorry about the bad reflections. A transreflective screen is kind of odd because I've got to try to get a good reflection on it, but not too many of the background images, and keep it in focus. Press it again. Another time. And we're back to the big time. Now, it's a little different than what it showed here because it's also attempting to get the GPS. You see that? But it's very similar. And this is a good one to know whether you've locked up with GPS or not. It's going to go on and on and on before it acquires, and uh, that's very frustrating. And then tap it again, and you're back to that main one that says, I'm already in my heart rate zone one, and I am not covering the diode, folks. <sighs> I wish they would solve this crazy, stupid heart rate stuff. And just when you're not sensing anything, make it drop to zero, because um, this could be giving us all sorts of bogus data that, is not going to apply to your fitness. Very frustrating. To stop this, you press it again here. You press it here to go back. 
you have an option to save it or to throw it away. I'm going to throw that one away. And we're back here. Press and come back to running. And then, of course, we can change to the other things like climbing. When you touch here and here and you start the climbing, you have different displays on here. Again, attempting to acquire GPS, and that's the same bars for your heart rate information. But now across of here, you have different numbers flashing. What are these? We'll check the actual manual and find out, but I'm just going to show them to you now. There's that screen. And then we're back to the, the basic one. Set it down, let it read the floor again. Hello, everybody. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, climbing. Climbing's on the next page. There's the symbols. Uh, right up to cycling. And that's what each of the screens look like. You got air pressure and height and distance and laps. Then you get into the actual cycling. All of these require and need and work with GPS. Now, this is the one where you're going to get um, satellite heart rate, calories, and speed. In kilometers per hour, no switching to uh, English. You can't get miles per hour. Your pace in minutes per kilometer. Again, no miles in lap times. And that's all happening in the cycling mode. Those are the three GPS required modes. Now you get into the walking mode, which is just plain walking and does not uh, uh, activate GPS. So it's similar to the running mode that we saw up here, or running mode over here. There's the running mode numbers and data that you get with GPS, and the walking is like that, all right? Then you get into the water stuff. Now this is where when they talk about the uh, waterproofing, they really should tighten that puppy up and say, yes, it's waterproof. You can swim with it. You can snorkel with it. Um, because you can, and you can definitely get it wet. So it's an IP67 or IP68, and uh, it's not really showing up in the manual described that way. For swimming, of course, no GPS, and you get these two screens here, which is showing arms, calories, and laps. And then this is fun, snorkeling. And check it out what you're getting. You're getting current depth in meters, I believe, between below the surface of the water, and you're getting a temperature in degrees centigrade. Uh-huh. And then you're getting your heart rate, and you're getting this uh, percentage here. Interesting, huh? And then you get ball, whatever that is. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of ball, but that's one screen that's just giving you Heart rate and calories burned. And then there's a, a page for a stopwatch where you can do lap time uh, calculations and whatnot too with the stopwatch. And just to move ahead with all of those, let's stop this. Did we uh, look at the pages? Yeah, we did. There's the pages on here. Then we hit back and we can toss that away and we come back and we can switch to the other ones cycling briefly going in here trying to get gps we'll say start there's your speed and your pace tap it again you get those things those things the big screen you're back again stop it Throw it away, back out of here, down to swimming, go. Notice there's no GPS flashing. These are the screens you have on your swimming. Just that one, two, two different screens, right? There and there. Okay, stop, return. Throw it away. Getting good at this. And then snorkeling. I wanted to show you that one for sure. There's your uh, distance down and your temperature. 
and I presume it takes it a while. Oh no, pretty quick. Okay, 30 degrees centigrade, just sitting here, 31. At the end of the video, I'm going to play with that. We're going to see what we can do. Uh, so stick around. When <laughs> we're almost done anyway. No, we still got the app to do. We'll be here for a little while. Stop that and so forth. And then uh, from here was ball. And then there's this little stopwatch thing that you've got here that you can start and do lap times and... There, that did all the, the lap time's kind of an interesting thing, what it's doing. Um, this was six from the other one. So the, ne the next lap time is the lap time from the last lap time, not from the very beginning. I haven't seen that before. See, there's 11 seconds duration between those that adds, you add all that up and you're up to the number at the point that I touched it. Kind of odd, but it works. Stop and... Release out of here, I guess. I remember this. I had a heck of a time trying to get out of the stopwatch. There. Done, I think. How do I get back? There we go. Okay, and then we're back around the full circle. Come back to the main screen. Now we've covered all of the exercise functions. So with the watch, we're almost done. You've seen everything except when you press and hold this button, you get into the overall menu. When I let go, I got to remember that, where you have uh, your information from the things that you've done. So this is the overall steps, calories burned, and uh, distance traveled in that particular mode. And there's nothing more forward or back. I can come back out of here. And here's where you can set some target goals of 10,000 feet, for example, or 8,000 or 6,000. So you don't have a lot of choice. It jumps by 2,000 each one. Tap the top, I guess, and it logs that in. And you can come back and back out of there. So that's your overall step count. Then you've got your walking, your running, your climbing, your cycling. Let's just jump in there for an example of the historical data sheet that you get because yesterday I accumulated some time on the cycling mode. And here's the overall summary report. Um, is that doing... Uh, let's look at the manual, see if we're getting those kinds of summaries in here. We did the walking, swimming, snorkeling. Okay. Uh, the ball and the stopwatch. Then there's the history record is what we're looking at right here. There's an example of the walking record. Then there's running, climbing, and so forth and so forth. So they're not expanding and showing you all of them. They just show you one. And uh, I just showed you one. And there you have an idea of what it is for cycling. That should back us out of here. For cycling, we have options that we can set, which is five kilometers. So I'm presuming that it either does a lap every five kilometers or it'll vibrate for you. But that's the parameter that you can set on this one. So each of these that have that little symbol on them, that's some sort of a uh, data point that you can set. And then, of course, you've got swimming, snorkeling, ball, overall laps, looping. You have uh, sedentary reminders. You have sleep information. And I haven't worn it to bed, but that would be the, I guess, light and deep sleep, Z versus ZZ. Then you have your heart rate. Now, this is fun because here you can turn it on or off. And here you can set for it to vibrate when you exceed a certain threshold. And you can adjust that threshold. Oh, got to go down. Nope, that's back. See, here's it's odd. Okay, press that one again. There we go. Now I can adjust the threshold by 10 
uh, beats each time. And I can leave it there. Uh, that's the upper one. And then there's the lower one. And I can adjust that there. And those are the three things that you can control. Turn it on, and now I've got a bracket. If I fall below or am above those ranges, it should vibrate to let me know. That's nice. And we're back out of there. And then finally, we are down into overall settings, where you can turn on and off GPS. You can turn on or off the sound. And I have it off right now, and it's vibrating. So when I turn it on which I do with that, and then turn that. Okay, now we should hear beeps, perhaps, when I move it. There's an alarm you can set, a uh, daily alarm. There's where you set the date and time. This is a calendar, you know, your, your date, and there's your time set. But um, it will sync automatically when you hook it up with your phone. Here's a contrast thing, so you can adjust the contrast of the screen. That's zero and it goes up to 19, and actually I like it even more contrast than that, but that's the best I can do. And depending on where you are and the polarization of the light outside, you may need to adjust it to get it to look best for you. And then we get down to your personal information, which you can set here, or you can set in the app and have it pushed over here, male or female, Okay, that selects it. This takes it down. You set your age, your height in centimeters, your weight. And that's it, those looping things for your personal data. And in the app, I'm going to show you how important that is. And then the bottom thing was to basically turn off the watch. And that takes us back to the home screen. And that's everything that you can do on the watch itself. Oh, just to catch up with the book, because we covered all of those things, and then we went into the next sections. Uh, this is what it looks like for what's called lap record. That was that little symbol, and that's how it works. The long time sitting prompt, that's your sedentary reminder that you can turn it on, and the time duration setting, starting and ending time, so you have a range. It won't beep in the middle of the night because you're sedentary. Your uh, sleep monitoring, again, your light and deep sleep. The heart rate monitor settings, where you can do the maximum and minimum heart rate and turn that feature on or off. And then uh, the satellite, where you'll actually get your GPS information of your current location when you go into that screen and the ability to turn GPS on and off. Sound, alarm clock setting your date and time, and so forth. All right, now we've covered the whole manual. We're jumping over to the app. When you start the app, you're in your dashboard. The dashboard's giving you your basic step information, which you can expand. And you can see that these are the times that I had the band tracking some distance information. Not much today. I can go to yesterday's data. And here it'll show a circle with my overall percentage completion against the goal and some verbiage down at the bottom. And then if you use it for sleep, you'll get a sleep report circle here that'll have your awake versus uh, light sleep versus deep sleep and some verbiage that goes along with that. So I'll let you read that on the screen. Some advice, it doesn't ever change. And then I'll let you read this stuff on the screen. See, it's attempting to get that uh, report, I think. Well, you already saw that, I guess. And that's yesterday data. Then there's the data summary. And these are charts that accumulate uh, weeks, months, and years. And this is the current week of which yesterday's data is on here because the day is over. The rest of it, I guess, for current day will happen and be seen tomorrow. And you have all these different categories. Okay, average heart rate, sleep, activity, active calories, interactive, inactive calories, your distance, and your total steps by weeks, months, and years. That's what goes on, and there's no other scrolling. 
and no other maneuvering other than sliding up and down or changing the scale for your data uh, for anything here. So then we have to go to the real-time heart rate. Now, I was been wearing this most of the day, and here's the heart rate data for today so far. However, you see these areas where there's just a straight line for a long time? I got a feeling that that's accumulating heart rate data against measuring nothing if the band is off and still getting some data there, which was different than the chart that we showed you on here. But nonetheless, there we go. I got a little bit of a peak here, probably an error, but it's jumped up into the minimum heart rate zone. It doesn't give you those values on here, but they are calculated from the settings. And this is all that happens on this one. I can't go forward or back. These squares don't do anything. Go to settings, shows I'm Bluetooth connected. You touch that, this is how you would get it connected. It only will do auto sync, you can't change that. You can set your alarm clock information here or on the watch. You can set your sedentary uh, interval time and start time and end time, just like you can on the watch. You can go to 12 or 24 hour mode. Yay, nice, huh? Uh, you can do imperial or metric uh, reading. However, that only applies to the app. It doesn't change from metric on the watch. All of your speed measurements are going to be in um, metric. If you work in miles per hour, um, that's not going to help you on here, but you'll be able to see the units in Imperial here. Now, social notice is where you turn on which apps you want to push notices to your watch. And you saw from our opening uh, advertiser screen, it will actually show you those notices on the watch. You can turn on or off the all-day heart rate. You can set your screen saver time, which is uh, when the backlight will turn off. You can erase all your user data, check your firmware update, and here's the fun stuff. Now, here's the user information. I've got the goal set. I've got some random data in here, and it's calculating the BMI and giving me the best sport heart rate, 105 to 132. Let's change the age from 44 to 64. Remember what we saw down there before? Look at that. It all changes. And on the apps that are doing the chart stuff and have these bars here, that all is going to change in the percentages against your total 100% down to, what, 60% of that number. So this is a really nice feature that if you change your height or your weight... Uh, 110 pounds. Well, that didn't change it much. But definitely your age will uh, affect the overall calculation of what your best sport heart rate range is. And that's divided into all of these different zones for fat burning or aerobics or whatever you want. So that's a nice calculation and a nice feature of this watch when you're running in... Um, the different exercise modes. That's all in the user information. And then you just basically have your version of this particular app. And that takes us to exercise. So exercise is showing all of the different exercises you've done and saved. We saw when we threw it away, if you save it, you get, for example, biking, you get your kilometers per hour, your total kilometers, the calories burned, because I was riding in a car, not on a bike and uh, your laps. Below where my hand is hiding is a map. The map is uh, showing you the GPS trajectory as recorded by the watch. You don't need your phone with you when you're collecting the data because it has the GPS module in it if it acquires GPS so that you can uh, do that. So my suggestion to you is when you're going to exercise is you turn it on, get it going, and uh, basically you got to wait uh, while you're in that mode and the GPS symbol is flashing, wait till it acquires, then start, and your time and your calories and your distance and your speed will all correlate correctly and give you a good map. Now, the map is a standard uh, Google, GP, uh, uh, Google Maps uh, with the track on it. You don't have anything else with it. You can't tell what your heart rate was at a specific place in your 
in your uh, exercise routine or any of those things, but it just does give you a, a, an overall map. And these uh, exercises are listed one after another, and if you touch the map, it expands the map to full screen. And sorry, I'm not showing you the maps, but they're of my area and my exercises. You'll have your own. So that's it. That covers the app, all of the settings, your real-time heart rate, your data for today, yesterday, and your data summary. You don't get a lot more detail than today if you want the actual breakdown like this. For previous days, you don't have it. You just have the summary. So make sure you check it all out and make any kind of notes you need by the end of the day before midnight or that date is lost. Okay. First of all, let's weigh the watch. We'll pop it on the scale, curl its band over, and show you it's a relatively heavy 77.8 grams for this device. And in terms of band thickness, if you wanted to change the style at the end, you need to know that the band itself at the end part is about 24 millimeters. And if you're actually going to change this out from the band itself, where it connects in is not from the post, but from the band. 23.924. So it's it's a 24 millimeter band that's being used on the Makibez G07 from AliExpress web store for the actual company itself. Uh, check the show notes for a buying link with discount coupon if available. And in the comments, if you have any feedback on this watch, be sure you put them there because this is one of those rare times where we have the attention of the actual manufacturer. Sometimes you see these same type of watches offered by other third parties under different names and numbers, and they all come back and get them from Makibas themselves, who sent this directly to us, and we'll be monitoring the comments for feedback. So features you like, you don't like, things you want to see changed in an upcoming model, like improvement in acquiring the GPS, that would be my input, um, definitely leave them in the comments. And uh, hopefully we will have some back and forth dialogue and make things even better in the future. All right, enjoy this watch and thank you again for watching. If you haven't subscribed, we invite you to. A lot of good stuff coming up, a whole bunch. I got like seven more devices that I got to review for you soon. So hang in there. They're going to be popping out really fast now.